right now is the easiest time in history for real estate agents to make money, but it doesn't feel like it. And you have to completely change your business every single year. You have the right business model in place and you're operating under the right principles competition doesn't exist it means you value the person over the money how many people in the market know who you are and trust you to the point that they want to do business you should have never stopped like it's momentum it's really hard to build up it takes a second for it to crash and burn ladies and gentlemen make some noise for ricky Caru. ricky Caru. From Gulf Shores, Alabama, I introduce you. He's number one, not top four. He's the man of the real estate industry. Hey, what's up? It's Ricky. I just wanted to let you know really quickly before we get into this keynote, how much fun I had in Nashville at this keynote. If you were there, I appreciate you. This was on the day that the NAR settlement rules came into play. And what was so fascinating is when I did the Q&A at the end, which was fire, by the way, there was no questions about the settlement changes and what we should do with buyers or sellers that I was expecting. And I think the reason being is because I addressed all of those concerns during the speech that you're fixing to watch. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you get a lot out of this. And if you want to see me live, I'm going to be in Fort Myers, Florida, September 20th, coming up really soon in a couple of weeks. I'll put a link in the description for all of these events. I'll be in St. Augustine on October 15th doing a two-hour training session there. Uh, I'll be at BAM Mania in Vegas. That's going to be October 18th. And also, I'm going to have a workshop in Gulf Shores. This will only be about 50 people. So it'll be an all-day workshop. Lunch is included. And that's going to be October 22nd. So I've only got 10 tickets left for that. So I'll put a link in the description for all that. And I'm already getting some speeches for next year. I've got Dallas, January 16th. I'm going to be in Orlando in March. I'm already getting some inquiries. And I'm also looking at L.A. early December, December 11th. I'm still looking to lock those things in. But anyway, I'd love to see you uh, at my next live event. I'll put a link in the description for all this. And enjoy this keynote. Hey, anybody else want to share a, uh, share a breakthrough moment? This is just too powerful just to just act like this stuff isn't happening in the room. Anybody else want to share a breakthrough moment? Okay. Stand up if, if following me and the principles and being around the community that I built has been a huge positive impact on your business. Let's do that. Stand up if, if, if what, what we're doing as a collective unit has been a huge positive impact on your business. See, this is amazing. See, we're, do we're doing good work here. Give it up. Cool. Let's keep the energy going. Why don't we? Um, if you guys are excited about the possibility to learn how to create deals out of thin air, make some noise. Okay, congratulations. Give yourself a hand for being here, too. Because showing up is 90% of it yeah. yeah it literally is like I remember um, one of the one of the, the well the well I guess all-time greatest agent in my market um, I mean until I came along but <laughs> all time you know he probably you know the length of his run uh, was a lot longer than mine but but I remember he said uh, about going to listing appointments he's like go in there and just just talk to him about jet skis <laughs> Real estate will find its place in the conversation. You know, too many of us are trying to go in there and use the scripts and get it done and handle objections and get that thing signed. That's not what it's about. It's not about doing the deal. So I want to start the theme out. I want this to be the theme of the day. Keep it simple. Now, keep it what? Keep it simple. That's what we got to do because real estate agents literally overcomplicate everything. Would you agree? Yep. Like we turn the most simplest thing into the most complicated process that I've ever seen. Like, the worst is, is we, the, the agent on the other side of the deal. <laughs> like, the other agent. Uh, but I, I was thinking about it and I was like, why do we make things so hard? And then it hit me. 
I was like, we've been programmed to look for the hard answers. Like we've been programmed to look for the hard answers. Like it can't be this simple. So let me just make it hard instead of the easy answers. And I've, I've, I'm on a lifelong journey to find the easy answers. I want, it the, I want the easiest, simplest path that there possibly can be. Now, where'd y'all go? <laughs> y'all can, can turn them back on a little bit. Okay. All right, I, I'm gonna tell you guys something. And you tell me if you agree. Right now, is the easiest time in history for real estate agents to make money. It's the easiest, like it's the easiest time in history for real estate agents to make money, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. Why? Because the world moves so fast. Seriously, you guys can turn on like, like maybe one of them lights. <laughs> like, I'm serious. <laughs> like, this thing on, can y'all hear me? <laughs> but, okay, see, this is, this is good. I can see you guys here. Y'all mind if I'm up here? Look, I got people over here. <sighs> Off subject a little bit, I know that Nashville home prices have had a significant run. Right? Right? Yeah. I, I, we go to a lot of places. What I realized yesterday when I got here is that there's also been a significant increase in the amount of people that walk their dogs around the city. Yeah. What is up with the dog walkers? <laughs> okay, one more question before I get into this. Can anyone guess where I had breakfast this morning? Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Broken egg. Broken egg. Broken egg. Biscuit, love. Biscuit love. You guys weren't here last year. Biscuit love. Biscuit love. Who's, who's been to Biscuit love? Oh, my people. My people. Okay. If, not when, because I don't know if I will, but if I say something that, that really hits home, just blurt it out. Just Biscuit love. Okay? If I hear biscuit love, then I know I said something that resonated with you guys, all right? Let's all try it together, okay? Biscuit love on three. One, two, three. Biscuit love. Okay. If something really hits home, then I'll know it, because it'll sound like a bird. A biscuit love. Loveless Cafe. Good gosh. <laughs> what is that? Loveless Cafe. Blah bless cafe. Yeah. I don't know about that. But I will. Okay. It's the easiest time in history to make money as an agent. But it doesn't feel like it. The world's moving too fast, right? So for those of you that was in the business in 2019 and, and actually had a great momentum in your business. Right? Great momentum in your business in 2000. I mean, you, 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 you can say this about every year, but let's just start with 19. Great momentum in your business, right? It's the new millennium, 2020. I know I was excited, like, okay, this is, we're fixing to do this. And then what happened? We're in the middle of a pandemic. We didn't see that coming. Right? But, but our business literally had to turn on a dime and, and adjust to the situation. 2020 rolls, pandemic happens, we, we, it starts to die down, we get used to that market. Then what happens? The market explodes. 2021, one of the craziest markets we've ever had. Now we gotta get used to that market. Multiple offers, things selling in a day, no inventory. Okay, then the moment we get all nice and settled into that market, then what happens the next year? Interest rates. Interest rates shoot up. What happens? The market turns on a dime. 2022. We keep going, we keep going, we keep going. Then what happens? Transactions just completely fall. Days on the market up. Now we're in a new market. As soon as we get used to that market, 
Now we got new, completely new rules we have to abide by with the industry. We got the election. We got to figure that out. And then guess what? Next year is going to be different. What's it going to be? It's going to be different. What's it going to be? Different. <laughs> Somebody said biscuit. I was like, <laughs> biscuit. I. My point is, is that every single year presents different obstacles and opportunities. And you have to completely change your business every single year. It's going to be different next year. The year after that's going to be a whole different world. The year after that is going to be different. Every single year is different. It's part of the business. So whatever changes come your way, just know that, that, that's, that's just par for the course. That's just, that's just what you signed up for. These changes with what's happening, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. I'm going to tell you how I would handle it. And when I do, I'm not telling you that's how you should do your business. So let's get that straight. I'm not telling you how to do your business. You do your business however you want to do your business. But I'm going to tell you how I would run my business. If I, if I were still selling and I, I see these changes coming up. Now for the last four years, three years coming up here, I normally do slides, I normally have uh, market analysis, I normally tell you guys where the market's going, where the opportunities are, how you can capitalize. Not gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but it's not going to be a big focus at all. Why? Because it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't what? Matter. matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because it changes. See. What you have to do is, is you have to become the person that understands the principles of the game. And when you under, those principles never change. When you understand the principles of the game, the market doesn't affect you. So that's what I want to get more into today rather than here's what the market's going to do. I'll talk about it. I will set you up for success within that arena. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that you're operating under the right business model, a great business model, and you're operating within the right principles within that business model. When you, when you have the right business model in place and you're operating under the right principles, the, the market is irrelevant. And anybody that thinks they're your competition are delusional. Competition doesn't exist in, in my world because I operate at this higher level. That's what I want to share with you guys today. I'm going to share with you the greatest business model that I've ever seen in my life. I've used it to make millions. I've coached agents who have used it to make millions, right? And it will literally shield you from any market swings, new rules, inventory supply, it, that's irrelevant. When you understand the game at the level I'm about to teach you, does that sound like, like the kind of business you want? Yes. Wave at me if you think, wave at me if, you, if, you, if that's the type of business that you want. One, two, three, guys, let's do it all together. You want to? Okay, let's do it. Okay. One, two, three. Biscuit love. It's supposed to sound like a bird. Biscuit love. It's supposed to sound kind of a little more exciting. No, that was good. Cheerleader section. Don't mind if I do. So that's what I want to share with you guys today. I also want to share with you on top of the, of the business model that will literally help you find clarity in what you do every day that you could go out and make a million. When I say make a million dollars, just, just, just to, to, for the, I don't know, I don't really need this, I don't think. When I say a million dollars, just, just to make it clear, that is relative to whatever your big goal is. If your goal is to make 200000 
That's what I mean when I say a million dollars, right? If your goal is to make two million, that's what I mean when I say a million dollars. Okay, just to make it clear. So on top of the business model I'll share with you, I also want to share with you the core principle, right? The, the, the Dalai Lama, the one, the core principle that, that connects all the other principles, right? And literally just gives me the superpower to go out here and create deals out of thin air. And when you get this, it's game over. How many of you guys have seen me make calls on uh, live, call prospects live on YouTube? Yes. Oh, one. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Not really. Why not? When you guys watch that, do, do, do you watch that? I mean, because I watch it back and, and I kind of think this and I'm not being egotistical or like, wow, Ricky, I've been doing this for so long. I, I, I eat, sleep and breathe this in terms of communicating to people in a way that I'm here to serve them. And guess what that does? It enables them to want to do business with me because I'm trying to help them do what they want to do. That's the essence of the whole thing. Do you ever watch that and, 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 look, and watch me take those awkward calls and turn them into gold? Do you ever watch that and think, how does he do that? I could literally, I could move to another market. I could start from zero because I understand I've mastered the process the whole process, communication, lead gen, conversion, retention, ascension, the whole game wrapped up, understand it. I could start over from a new market and, and pick one lead source, Instagram, Facebook, cold calling, door knocking, direct mail, whatever it is. I could take one lead source and focus on this one lead source and you could pick it. I don't care what it is, any of them and go build a million dollar business with that one lead source. Because I, I'm, you got, most agents, they think, like when, when I'm calling property owners, you gotta realize, they're on Zillow. Like they are Zillow leads. Like what's a Zillow lead? Somebody searching around on Zillow? Like everybody's on Zillow. Everybody's a Zillow lead. You just call them. It's crazy because like, I have literally 5X'd my income on social media. I'm the biggest believer in social, and I could build an entire real estate business out of social media, 100%. Because I understand the KPIs. I understand the real objectives to lead gen. And I know how to get there faster. And I understand how to create situations out of nothing and then pursue those situations. I just got it all wrapped up. But at the end of the day, this is what we're gonna talk about. The business model, the core principle, because I want you guys to go out there when you leave here, have complete, complete clarity on where your business could be over the next couple of years. Like this year, great. Next year, great, whatever. But my thing is, is I want to help you build your career, your entire career. And when you leave here, you're going to have clarity on your career. And I believe that you're at least going to have taken a step towards understanding what the game is really all about if you don't already. Are y'all ready to get started? Yes. Make some noise. Okay. But first, there's more. Okay. As I'm getting into the business model, because the business model has a lot to do with the new rules, right? How are we going to navigate the the new waters right the new when a storm comes like you didn't ask for the storm you're in a boat you're you're riding along a, a storm comes you, you didn't ask for that but it happened you got to deal with it we don't ask for these things but what do we have to do we have to deal with it deal with it one more time 
We, we don't ask for these things, but when they come, what do we have to do? Deal with, Deal with it. We got to get excited, guys, about this. Wealth is a high energy result. It's a high energy result. If you got low energy, you're not going to have a lot of wealth. That makes sense, right? Again, when I talk about this stuff that everybody seems to have an opinion on and how it's going to go, and they want to give Ricky hate mail and crucify him, I don't care how you run your business. I want you to know that. Do it however you want to do it. Okay. In the new world, I think we got three types of buyers. We got the buyers that go straight to listing agent. Okay. We got the buyers that are happy to pay you. And then you got the buyers that are not going to pay you. Okay? In my, in my mind, as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, I, there's three different types of buyers. A, go straight to the listing agent. You don't want to sign a piece of paper. You don't want to commit to an agent. You want to try to figure out how to knock that off the price or do whatever you're going to do, you weirdo, <laughs> and go straight to the listing agent, right? Okay. <laughs> There was no intended humor there, just so you know. Then you got the buyers who are happy to pay you. We were just talking Dennis and uh, Monica, is it? Marion. Mar Marion. She had a buyer. She got 3%, and the buyer was like, did you get paid enough? Can I pay you some more? <laughs> okay. That buyer would be classified under B. Happy to pay you. Then we got the buyers, right? They want your services. They want your services, but they can't afford you. They don't want to pay you. They're not going to pay you, whatever the reason being, right? Okay. You guys can just blurt it out. Or actually, still like this, okay? What, which buyers do you think that we should be working with, right? Who thinks A? What if you're a listing agent? Okay. You guys, all those buyers, just send them to me and I'll figure out how to take care of them. How about B? No? Okay. No. <laughs> Miss good love. C, not going to pay you. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all aren't playing the game, okay? Let, let, okay, y'all, everybody blurt it out at once, real loud. You A, B, C, or all of them, or A and B, or whatever you think, all right? One, two, three. All of them. All of them. That's what you guys said, all of them? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad you guys said that. Because that is my answer. All of the above. Nothing's going to change, guys. Now, let, now, let's think about it, though. Let's think about exactly how this plays out. Because for you guys that are old school, zero to diamonds, right? You guys can um, complete this. Are you looking to set and close more listing appointments? That's exactly why I created the Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. It's a four day challenge and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about setting more listing appointments and closing more listing appointments. If you wanna become a listing machine, then you need to take the next challenge. You can go to setmorelistingappointments.com or just click the link in the description. I'll see you on the next challenge. Relationships over. Transactions. Loud. I want to hear this. Transactions. Transactions?
So the, the leading core principle of my coaching program from day one in 2000, end of 16, beginning of 17, was relationships over transactions. What does that mean? It, mean, it means you value the person over the money. Why? Because the money is the byproduct of the relationship. Do you guys realize that? Okay, let me back up. Right now, the way it is, before the rules come into effect, right? Before we even knew the rules were going to even exist, a buyer reaches out to us, okay? What do we do as agents at that point with that, with that prospect of buyer? Put him in a CRM. Put them in a CRM. <laughs> listen, listen. A buyer would reach out to me. This is how I did it. A buyer would call me. Guess what I'm doing? I'm getting to work. I'm showing houses. I'm looking for houses. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm running around like crazy trying to, trying to do this deal. But guess what? At that point, I'm working for free. I don't know that this person is actually going to close a deal. I'm working for free. What's the difference if a buyer comes to me, let's just say, let's just say that no sellers offer, offer a buyer agent commission, concessions, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. They, none of them offer it. And you've got a buyer that comes to you and says, can't pay, you're not going to pay, you can't afford it, whatever the case may be, right? What do you do? Let's just say all set, no sellers, let's just hypothetical, no sellers are going to offer a buyer agent commission. Let's say we get there, that's what it is, that the buyer says, what are you going to do? Tell you what I'm going to do, help that buyer buy a house. And I'll take whatever I can get from the seller, even if it's no money. I can't believe you're going to work for free. You're going to work for free? No. See, it's so fascinating that agents will, they'll base all their decisions on the money that they might make to pay their bills today instead of the money they will make to pay for their life tomorrow. Did I say that too fast? Let me say it a different way. I never, ever, ever work for free. But sometimes I might get paid in the form of relationships yes. that pay me 10, 20, 30 fold worth of future deals. Yes. If I were to help a buyer, and you, you gotta realize, the chances of this happening where you didn't make anything on the deal is like literally zero. Literally zero. But if one out of a million it happened, do you understand? I would treat that deal like it was a $10 million deal. I would go over the top for that person. Why? Because I don't, I don't, money is the byproduct. I, when, that, when that deal closes, do you understand the power of, see, we get paid, money, money, is, money is one of the things we get paid with. We get paid through experience, through knowledge, and through relationships. Money is the byproduct of how much of the first three you can build up. Say it again. It's, it, it, it goes like this. Biscuit love! <laughs> one, of the, one of the old timer agents in my market, you know, just this guy, amazing guy. And I remember I was talking to him one time when I was uh, coming up. And I was still making nothing. I was still, you know, almost brand new. I don't remember if it was when I came back after losing everything or before. But I remember, I, I, I'll never forget it. He, he, he and I, I can't remember when he started in real estate. It was a long time ago. Um, might have been 90s, might have been earlier, probably early 90s. But he said that he, in the beginning of his career, he would go out and he would do deals and he said he did so many deals for free. He did a lot of deals, he said, for free. He said he did whatever he had to do to get his name out there. 
He didn't care. He made money on it because he knew what, what his career. See, he, was, he had clarity on his career. I'm, I'm going to get into this in the business model. He understood where he was going. Right? He understood where he was going. And the problem is a lot of agents, they don't want to risk spending an ounce of time on something that, that they might feel may or may not pay them in money. They're scared of risk, possibly not making a dollar. So why even do this? Let's do something that we know for sure we're going to make some money. No, 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 no. Every single thing that you do produces something. It may not be money, but it produces something. And I'm telling you something else. That something that it produces that's not money is way more valuable than money. King Solomon, he said, in all labor are profits. What does that mean? It means every single thing you do produces something and everything works. That's why you'll never hear me say, you got to cold call, you got to do Zillow leads, you got to do it this way, you got to do it that way. No, you don't. Every single thing works. Anybody that tells you this is the way you got to do it, block their number. Like, <laughs> go somewhere else because they're lying. They either, they either don't understand or they're lying to you. One of the two. And either way it goes, you don't need to listen to them anymore. You can do it your way, right? You can do it any way that you want to do it. But at the end of the day, you can't be scared to take risks on people. I, I, I came up with a, a quote a long time ago. You guys will remember this. I said, the more time that I waste on people, the more money I make. The more time I waste on people. And the reason I use the word waste, it's not waste. It's invest. The more, the more time I invest in people, the more money I make. The reason that I, that I, that I trade and invest for waste is so, I, is so that you, so that the people that feel like they're wasting time on people, see, I said it, waste. See, agents feel like they're wasting time over here. Wait, no, you're not wasting time. You're investing time into people and that is the only thing that you can do to succeed. So why are you back? Why are you why are you backing away from investing time into people? The more time you waste on people, the more money you're going to make. Which brings me to another point. One of the biggest reasons why agents fail is because they're running around trying to convince people to do business with them. And they don't realize how it's, make, it's, it's literally making people run away from you. When, you. when you find yourself attempting to convince someone of something, you've lost, you have lost the game. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You're not going to change his mind. It's not going to happen, right? It's not about convincing people to do anything. Guess what? They're already doing it. Deals are happening every single day. Day in and day out like clockwork, more than you can ever handle in your life. Why are you trying to convince someone to do something that, that, that how many deals are happening in Nashville every day on average? A hundred, a hundred, two hundred, 300, I don't know. More than you can handle, and guess what? There's another two, three, four hundred tomorrow, and then again the next day, and the next day, it never ends. Why are you trying to convince this guy of something? He's, he or she is gonna do a deal at some point, and when they decide to, you wanna be the person that they, that they like enough to do the deal, not the person that try to get them to do something before they're ready. This is the biggest reason why agents fail, because they've been improperly trained. A quote's coming to me. Jesus. He said, the greatest among you is the one who is serving. The one who puts everyone else's interests above their own. The greatest among you. The wealthiest, the strongest, the wisest. Now, When we, when we think about 
valuing relationships over transactions. One reason I think agents run around trying to convince, they, they have no C on, I'm going to say your, C. They have no C on their C. You want to play a game? What do you, what do you think it means? Clarity on their career. So you want me to clear it up for you? Make some noise if you want me to clear it up for you. Okay, somebody's away. Make sure I'm not missing anything before I get to this. I, uh, I said earlier, I'm trying to help you guys build your careers. We're going to crush 2024, 2025. That's in the bag. That's done. We're going to crush that. But I'm way more interested in your 10, 15, 20 year career that you're trying to build and to, and to cram as many deals as you. Whenever, whenever I first start coaching an agent, one of the first things I ask is how long are you planning on this career? How long do you plan on doing real estate? Like what's your, what's your plan? as far as the length of your career. Whatever they say, I don't care if it's five years, 10 years, 20, 30, whatever it is. It gives me an idea of where they are. But what I try to illustrate to them is that, okay, you, 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 you wanna put this 15 year career together, okay? You gotta understand that your every day is objective is yes to do deals today. That's just gonna happen. That's a byproduct if you do what you're supposed to do. But the bigger objective is to cram, to stack as many deals into this 15 year window as you possibly can, agreed? That's the goal. How do you do that? It's how many relationships, how many people in the market know who you are and trust you to the point that they want to do business. So, so when we think about doing deals for free and, and, and creating relationships with people who aren't ready to do business right now, okay. Okay, year one. Year one as an agent. You don't have any business. All you have is new leads. That's it, that's all you have is new leads. Okay, so you have to have two things in place. One, you have to have your lead gen in place, okay? And two, you have to have your retention in place, okay? Lead gen is what brings the leads in, the new leads, prospecting, social media, whatever you do. And the reten retention makes sure that these people never forget you. They never forget you. You have to have both of these in place. Most agents only operate with this. They don't make sure people never forget them. And then some agents only operate from this. They have no new leads coming, from, coming in, but they're great at making sure everybody remembers them. You have to combine the two, okay? Are we on the same page? Yes. Yeah. So year two rolls around, and these new leads from year one, because of your retention, they now become warm leads, all right? But what's really interesting about year two is, is that we added, we added another layer of new leads, right? We prospected year one, we're prospecting year two. Now what happens year three? Oh, these warm leads from year two that were new leads in year one are, are still warm leads because they still remember us because of our weekly email. And are now our new leads from year two now become warm leads year three, and guess what? We're still prospecting. And now our business has this growth, even though we're doing the same 
activities every year, we're stacking the relationships and the amount of people that know who we are, and we're going deeper with these. You know when you go on a listing appointment and you're a new agent, and they interview three agents, and you lose the deal, and you're like, How, why did I lose that deal? What happened? They liked me. What, what, was, what was the problem there? The agent that got the deal started talking to them two years earlier when they were a new agent and they've been nurturing them for two years and for three years they know and like they have more trust built with that agent you didn't do anything wrong you just have to understand the process as soon as you understand this process and you start front loading with as many of these leads as you can regardless if they buy or sell or not today the bigger your business is going to be later what happens is agents make calls for three weeks, feel like it's not working, stop making calls. A couple months later, they do a few deals on the people they called three months ago and they said, huh, I, I guess I should start making calls again. You should have never stopped. Like it's momentum. You can't, you cannot let, moment. It's really hard to build up. It takes a second for it to crash and burn. And then you gotta start all over again and build it up. Now, you see where I'm going with this, I would imagine. Year four, same thing. Look at where we are. Year five, same thing. Look at where we are. Year six, same thing. Look at how big our business has grown and we are not doing anything different every year, but now we're at the point where we're making one million dollars a year. Now what's interesting is four, five, six, seven. What's interesting is year seven. This is, this is where the magic happens right here, okay? Year seven, you're doing your weekly email, everything's popping, right? You don't prospect that year. You don't prospect that year, right? But guess what? You quit prospecting, but your business is still this size, the same size as it was year six. It's the same size business, even though you didn't prospect anymore. And guess what you made year seven? You made a meal. Year six, you made a meal. Year seven, and then guess what? Year eight, you don't prospect anymore. Year nine, you make a meal again. You're not prospecting anymore. See, people think, oh, yeah, no, bro. no. You, you get to, this is the land of the milk and honey. This is the shape you want your business to be, right here, right? In this phase, right here, you're prospecting. You're prospecting like a wild, a wild man. But when you get to the point that you're making the amount of money you want to make, 100, 200, a million, 2 million, you don't have to prospect anymore if retention. See, if you're not doing the weekly email on the same day of the week forever, these people, you're one, never, never remember you. I'll show you what that looks like. Most agents that don't have retention in place, this is what their business looks like. New leads, new leads, new leads, new leads, new leads. They're great at sales. They're great at lead gen. They're great at converting and convincing people. But they do nothing to make sure that these people never forget them. They forgot about them by year two. You're, now this person's only dealing with the leads that they get year two. And now in year three, same thing. And by the way, they're talking to people that aren't ready to do business. They're forgetting about them. That's where all the money is. All the money is the people that aren't ready to buy or sell. That's where your entire career is. That's what builds up. That, the, the people that aren't ready to buy or sell, that's what gets you here. You can't get there without them. Not gonna happen. They are even more valuable than the people that do deals today. Now, these, these people, the agents, you know, they make two, 300K a year, and wonder why. Wonder why I can't get to 500 to a million. I don't know, I'm really working, I'm great at closing, I'm lead gens on fire. No retention in place. Then you got the great retention people. They call their sphere. 
right? They call their sphere. Maybe they do a little lead gen in the first two years. But then, but then they stop. They stop lead gen. They stop. They stop doing anything to get new leads year three. They do a little bit year one, year two. Yeah, they build it up a little bit, but then they stop. They're great at retention. Weekly email, social media, postcards, checking in, pop buys, everything that they do. But they quit building, they quit get, bringing new people into their business, right? These people, 200 to 300K a year, and they wonder why they can't get to 500 to a million. I'll tell you why. You're doing great with the retention. Everybody loves you. But you can't get there on referrals only. The referrals is what you live on once you get there. See, this is referral land. This is referral land. You don't get there with referrals. You live there with referrals. I, I, is this making sense? Yeah. Is this helping you guys visualize and find clarity? Because when, when you go out and, and work, you're like, oh, is what I'm doing actually helping? Am I actually, is this, is this, am I producing anything here? Am I getting any results? Yeah, agents will say, oh, I've been making all these calls and I'm not getting results. What's your definition of results? Well, I'm picking up emails and I'm having great conversations and people seem to like me and, you know, I'm, they're telling me they're, you know, following up and they say they're going to use me. They, I'm like, is that not a result? You can't get better if you're not doing it. The more you do it, the better you get. It's pretty simple, right? And what are we doing today? We're keeping it simple. Does this seem simple? Because it doesn't matter what your lead gen is. I'm not telling you what your lead gen should be. I'm telling you, you need to have enough conversations to build this number up every year and have a retention model where they never forget you. Just give up. <laughs> It's like a dying bird. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why agents are scared to make calls, right? I finally figured it out. Like I, like, like, I have a breakthrough for you guys. Forever and ever and ever and ever. I'm like, why? You know, I, 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 I empathize with the anxiety because I have it. Everybody has it. I go, when I do my training, my challenge, I go through the five stages of sales calls. Like, everybody goes through the same stuff. But, but allowing the anxiety to prevent you from your dreams, I didn't make sense to me. And, and so I've asked so many agents, and you know, you know what the most common answer is when you say, why, are you, why won't you make calls? Why are you scared to make calls? You know, what, what's the deal? You know what the most common answer is, right? I'll, I'll say, hey, why, why won't, you know, what's the deal? And they'll say, I don't know. The most common answer is, I don't know. And I'm like, hmm, that's fascinating. I'm like, okay, well, okay, well you don't know why you won't do something to make millions? There's got to be more to it. Well, rejection. And so everybody says the rejection part, right? But forever, I, I thought, that, that's not true. Like, there's something else there. I can't quite put my finger on it. And, and I believe I have my finger on it now. I believe I actually understand why all salespeople, not just agents, but with agents, you know, seems like it's more of an epidemic. Would you like to hear what I think? Yes. yes. And, and, tell me, and tell me how true you believe this is. The reason why agents won't make calls is because they're so scared, not a rejection, they're scared that the person on the other end of the phone is going to stereotype them as a scam. Like a sleazy salesperson trying to get them to do something. They don't want to be looked at like one of those evil salespeople. Right? There's a term called stereotype threat. And it means exactly that. 
and it causes call reluctance. And it means that stereotype threat is that you, you are scared to, to take an action that would possibly put you into the same group uh, that stereotypes by specific, by specific individuals, prospects. It's called stereotype threat. And it hit me like a ton of bricks and I said, there it is. We're scared to look like we're a used car salesman. We're so scared of like our reputation around possibly somebody thinking that we're trying to scam them. And it's, it's incredibly counterproductive because here's the thing, we are good people. People talk about DNC. I'll talk about DNC. Not the Democratic, or, what are we, do not call this. Just, that was funny, huh? I said, when I said that, I like turned this way to the screen, like if somebody would have been able to, anyway. Oh. Oh. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So do not call this. Here's the thing with do not call this. You know what that was created to protect? Consumers from robots and scam artists. Are you a robot? Are you a scam artist? No. Right? We are good people doing good work. You know 90% of people use a real estate agent? We're at a, we're, do you guys realize that we're at an all-time high with the amount of the general public that use a real estate agent to do a transaction? Yeah, we're at an all-time high. And that's interesting, right? Because we're also at an all-time high with the amount of information that consumers have. It seems like with the more information they have, the more able they would be to do transactions on their own, correct? It's not what the data shows. The data shows that the more information that they have, the more apt they are to using an agent. Why? It turns into Chinese, they got so much information, it's hard to cipher through, right? It's hard to make the right decisions, but it's the same as it's always been. They can't do the process because it's a lot of work. And so what does that mean? It means we, there's a desire in us to succeed because we want things, which is a good thing. It's good to want things, right? Let's say it all together. It's good to want things. One, two, three. It's good to want things like nicer cars or nicer homes. It's okay. It's a good thing. Why? Because it drives you to do what? Go help people so that you can succeed at the level to make the money to buy the things you want. It's good to have the desires to want things. It brings us together. We're good people doing good work. Quit acting like you're a scam. By you not making the calls to reach out to people to see what you can do to help them concerning your buyer or selling your real estate, you're literally conforming to the fact that, yeah, I don't need to call them because I guess I don't want to be looked at as a scam. Am I a scam? I don't know. I just won't call. No. No, uh, let me tell you why. Let me tell you who the scams are. Agents that won't call the people in the, in the community to see what you can do to help them. They're scams. That hurts. That hurt me. I don't know where it came from either. So I apologize. But it's true, right? You need to look at yourself as a volunteer worker doing community outreach to help people. Let me dig into the, the core value. Just have to take a second, man, on that. Like, like, is it? Like, we're dropping some serious, this is a serious day. I mean, are you guys getting a lot out of this, or is it just me? Make some noise. All right. So, my core value of everything that I do Why is that doing that? Okay. Is F-E 
I thought, I thought a long time about this. This is a term that I came up with a long, long, long time ago. And the more that I think about everything that I do, how I do it, um, what I teach, how I build my businesses, um, everything comes back to this, okay? Now, some of you guys have followed me a long time. Does anybody know what this means? No? Oh, I love that. It means family effect. It means family effect. And the core principle of it means treat every single person the way that you would your close family members. A default of mine when an agent asks me, how should I handle this situation? What should I tell this person? How should I follow up with this lead? You know, what should I say at this risk appointment? A default of mine most of the time is, well, what would you ask that prospect if it were your mother? Or your father? Or your best friend from high school? Or your cousin? Or your brother? Or your fellow agent? What would, what would the questions that you would ask your mom? See, when I, when I got to the level where I was making millions as an agent, I found myself treating every single prospect like they were an extended part of my family. And I would over deliver, under promise, over deliver every single time, just as I would if it were my mom, dad, brother, cousin, best friend from high school. And when you start treating every single prospect like they're part of your family, every, I'm, 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 just, I'm just telling you, you may think this is, you know, baloney. Whatever. But I'm telling you, when you start operating like this, everything changes and you start closing deals. Because you're not, what this does, this, see, the reason that this is the core leading principle of everything that I do is because everything can branch off of this. Right? So when you're treating everybody like family, all of a sudden, All of a sudden, like, like, like you don't care, like you have no, you have no like call reluctance. You have no call, you don't care what people think. See, I want you guys to know who you are at such a, and there's X amount of population in Nashville. I can't talk to every single person and the game is relationships, not transactions, so now, Business is unlimited. Biscuit King. Biscuit King. You can say it loud and proud. Who said it? You can say it loud and proud. Let everybody hear you, girl. Let everybody hear you. Biscuit love. Give it up for her. Okay, you re like all these principles that I teach, when you're operating here, everything falls into place. Business is unlimited. Now, competition doesn't exist. Right? When you lose a listing, it's like, okay, there's 15 more right behind it. Right? I can't talk to every single person. I don't care what they think, because I'm trying to, I'm just trying to help people. I'm not going after the deal. Ring, 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 hello. Hey, I'm a real estate agent. I'm not trying to sell my house. Good. I'm not trying to get you to sell your house, ma'am. Now, can we have a conversation? My point is that now you can be authentic, right? There's, a, there's dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of other attributes and characteristics and principles that flow from this one core principle. F.E. And, and it was so cool because I was down in uh, I was down in um, Fort Lauderdale speaking to NARREP a couple weeks ago and I, I didn't even know this but does anybody know what F.E. stands uh, means in Spanish? Huh? Faith. Faith. 
Wow. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. So what I want you guys to do have F-E. Have faith. Have faith that business is right around the corner. You don't have to close. When you're talking to a prospect, do you realize how much you don't need them? If you, if you give any indication that you need them, they're going to feel like they don't need you. You're literally going to drive them away. But in reality though, in reality, do you know how much you don't need them? Because of how abundant deals, relationships, etc., etc., are. I was going to quote Gary Keller. He said last week at his um, family reunion, he said there's plenty of home, of home selling. Plenty. And he said there's more than enough home sales for each and every one of you to hit your goals if you're doing the right thing. More than enough. More than enough. He didn't say that. More than enough to hit your goals if you're doing the right thing. There's more than enough, guys, for everyone to have more than enough and still be more than enough left over. If you take all these principles and you take this business model and you take these core principles and you let it really sink into the point where you can just turn into a super agent that nothing can take you down, no market can take you down, no body can take you down, no competition, nothing can take you down and you can literally go out and create deals out of thin air. Because when you guys see me make calls on YouTube, that's all I'm doing, I'm using FE. I'm talking to them like they're my mom, dad, brother, cousin. And I'm just, I'm so curious about them. I'm not trying to do a deal, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about what they have going on and if there's any way that I can help them with what they have going on. And if not, that's okay. That's how you create deals out of thin air. Um, I wanted to end with, with a couple of things. Momentum being one. Um, speaking of things being unlimited and stuff. One of the number one reasons why, or, through all my research, I believe that I've come across what I feel like maybe the number one attribute to the highly, most highly successful people. Would you guys like to hear it? Yeah. Yes. The most successful people are, are super hyper-focused on intentions and they ignore distractions. And the average and failing and unsuccessful people do the exact opposite. They hyper-focus on the distractions and ignore intentions. You gotta become the person. And it all starts in your mind. I, before I made a million dollars, I said, in my mind, I'm gonna make a million dollars. And then I slowly started to become the person through experience, knowledge, and relationships to become the person, and the money was the byproduct. The money was the byproduct. Have you guys heard this? I'm, I'm gonna do a story and then an ending quote, and then I'm gonna take some questions. Have you guys heard the, uh, I thought it was so interesting, and it, and it came to me when I heard the Gary Keller quote, the story when Jesus fed the, the 4,000 people. It, it, they, they were coming through Israel, and there was 4,000 hungry people, and his disciples said, how are we gonna feed all these people? They said, we got like four or five loaves of bread and some, a couple of fish. What are we going to do? He said, hand it to me. He broke it and said, here, pass it. Pass it. Pass it. He kept breaking and passing, breaking and passing. And before long, every single person had eaten to the point where they were full. And they looked over the baskets, and the baskets still had leftovers. And, and, and when, you, when, I, when I hear that story, and I read that story, and I think about transactions. I, 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 get, I, get, I, I get so passionate about this because it's, it's, an, it's an endless pit 
There's no like market share doesn't exist. You can have as much as you want. There's no pie. There's not like, I'm going to get my little piece of the pie. No, there's no pie. It's an ocean for you to drink. Good luck. That's what it is. That's what real estate is. It's an ocean that's sitting there ready for you to drink. That's how massive it is. I talked about momentum earlier. And how agents will make calls for a couple weeks and then they, they think it's not working, they'll quit doing it. Then they'll like do a couple deals from the people they talked to months ago on those calls. And it's like, where would you be if you kept making those calls? You literally dropped all the momentum you had. You had a couple little things trickle in, but just think of how massive your business would have been if you would have kept the momentum. Guys, don't lose your momentum. Set a routine, keep doing the things. Even when they don't feel like they're working, I promise you they are working. Biscuit love! <laughs> yeah. yeah, give it up for biscuit love over there. I promise you they are working because why? We get paid in more than money. That's one thing I want you guys to really understand. We get paid in more than just money. What about the experience? Now you're better from what you learn from the experience. What about the knowledge? What about the relationship? And don't be scared to take risks, right? You're gonna have deals that you don't make anything on. whoop de doo law of averages. Bottom line, we are crushing it. So don't lose your momentum. Don't lose your focus, right? Keep it simple and keep your eyes on the prize. Thank you guys for listening. Would love to take a couple questions if you guys have any. So I'm fairly new to the industry, and I just want to know when did you have your aha moment? When were you like, you know what, I'm gonna do this my way, and this is working? Oh, yeah. As far as like um, realizing like relationships over transactions, etc. Right. And you like, you know, I'm working with me. I don't want to do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. 2008. So, so I, I got in business in 2002 and I made a million before I'm 23. And then I lose it all in the crash and I was homeless. I was sleeping in my car, I was eating out of people's refrigerators, I was sleeping on people's couches, and I went back to roofing houses. And I think everyone should go roof houses for a year of their life, just for, <laughs> just, and serve tables. Yes. Um, both will, will bode you very well with um, experience. But, I got a job on an oil rig for a year. Um, why, I don't know, because I didn't have any bills. Um, but when I lost everything, I did it the wrong way. Close, 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 right? We've been programmed as, as, an, as an industry to chase, convince, and close. Yeah. Right? That's what we've been programmed to be. Chase, convince, close. And what I came up with on the challenge last, whenever I did it, I said, no, I'd rather communicate, attract, and service. Right? Communicate my value and who I am and what I bring to the table that will enable them to be attracted to me where now they're chasing me. I'm not convincing anyone. They're, they're, they want to do, they're begging to do business with me. And now I'm just servicing their needs. But it was 2008, and what happened was, I got laid off from the oil rig, and when I got back into real estate, I was forced back in, and I, and I had learned a lot about what I'm talking about. And I started to have conversations with my prospects, and I started to treat them like family. And it was so different. The experience of the conversation was so different, because before, before I lost everything, I was just trying to close, close, close. It was a cold conversation. When we did the deal, we never, never talked to them ever again. Like it was literally like 
And like I barely talked to him during the deal. It was just like, okay, we're gonna sign here. Wait, like it was such a cold transaction. And then when I came back, I said, okay, market, you got me once, shame on you. You will not get me again. When you, when you teach, I'm the kind of person, when you teach me something one time, you will never have to tell me that, how to do that ever again. And I will do it with perfection. So when I came back, I was having these conversations with my prospects and like they could tell I cared about them. And I could tell that they cared about me. See, something, something amazing happens. When, when you show up, I'm, listen to this. When you show up into these sales environments and you show up the exact opposite of what they expect a salesperson to be, yeah. amazing things happen. Number one, you view them as a person now, not just a prospect. They view you as a human now. Like they start to see you differently. Because like you surprise them. You didn't show up trying to just close them. You're like asking questions, genuinely caring. And then something fascinating happens. You both become genuinely curious and interested in each other now on, a, on an entirely different level. And this is where the magic happens. And that's what was happening when I started having conversations when I came back. I was like, let me test this FE thing out. Let me treat people like family. Like maybe that's the way to go because I want to build relationships. I want to get to 100 deals. I want to be the best in the world. Everything I do, everything. Public speaking, real estate coach, agent, football, everything that I've ever done, my goal is to become the best in the world. The, to me, there's not a second place. And I don't care how long it's gonna take, how hard it's gonna be, that doesn't matter to me. My pursuit is, and guys, the, the journey is the destination, okay? There's no there there. Yeah, I said, probably said that too fast. But it was 2008, I realized it, and the conversations were totally different, and from there on, my life was completely changed. Thank you for the question. Hey, Ricky, thanks so much. Um, Ricky, I'm um, thank you so much for today. Awesome, great, great content. Spurred a lot of ideas for me, especially when you were talking about doing. And you're a huge team leader, right? Uh, no, I have a small team. Um, but what's your volume? I mean, we sell right at 100 homes a year. Look, I mean, well, you got a guy that's at the top of the top of his game. He showed up here, took time out of his day to come see if he could find one little nugget to take back to that. Give it up for this guy. Thank you so much, uh, Ricky. I, I did have a question because we do uh, coach our agents. You know, we're in a human behavior, human attraction. You know, love on these people and treat them like family, and that's how we want to grow our businesses. However, I did. I was kind of curious uh, in your experience. I know it. I know everyone has kind of had a different skill that skill level. Right when they come in to start prospecting, okay, mm -hmm. I know that that's a variable in this question. But have you seen any consistent numbers when you're talking about an agent prospecting, right, to, to start their business to get to where they can make a million dollars a year? Are you seeing a consistent number that they daily need to be kind of connecting with a certain amount of people to, to make that million dollars happen? It's all over the board. I've seen people make 13,000 calls before they get to their first deal. I've seen people make 20 deals in their first 3,500 calls um, and everything. I, I, I know an agent that made 85,000 calls and didn't get anything. Um, it's, uh, it's all over the board, right? Um, everybody's numbers will be different and it's based on their ability see what what do you what do you call a doctor's office practice. a practice why because they practice it when, 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 when you in there and they, they cutting on you they practicing it's the real thing, but they're practicing. 
Why are they practicing? So they can be better for the next person. And the next person. And the next person. And then they're practicing to get better. Practicing to get better. Pra and so the agents who aren't practicing, they're just reading scripts and saying words that they think they should say. And they're not using those conversations to actually get better at talking to people to learn more about them then they will make 85,000 calls and get nothing. So the agents that realize that this, is, this whole game is practice, every list of appointments you go on is practice. See, that's the difference in me and other agents when, they, when, we were, uh, when, I was, when I was up against other agents, interviewing other agents. I wasn't there to get the listing. I was there for two reasons. To connect with this person, and to get better at going to listings. Yeah. If I got the listing, that was just a bonus. And guess what? Because this was my mindset, I got most of them. Because I'm not there to get the listing. I'm so disconnected from the result, it's almost scary. Two weeks ago, whenever it was, I pitched my coaching program. And there was 100 people on the call, and I sold some. And as I'm pitching it, I'm telling them, like, this is, I don't care what you guys do. Here's the opportunity. People it jumped on it. The next day, I repaid with the others, dealing with all the showings, um, dealing with the title companies, and all, all the stuff that you guys know. I don't have to tell you what you go through. Yeah. Right? You want, like, I've heard a lot of agents say, well, I might as well have just been working at, at McDonald's. Right? I'm, I pretty much made, I made minimum wage on this deal. Right? Because it feels like it sometimes. My point is, is in that scenario, who wins bigger on the 18,000? Right? Who wins bigger? The seller literally goes to sleep like a baby every night while this deal is going on. They don't even know half the, 90% of the stuff that you, you got going on that you're, you're stressed out. You take on all the stress for them. Right? Money is measured to me in time and stress. But who, who wins bigger in that situation, would you say? Fine. The seller. The seller wins way bigger than the agent. Trust me. <laughs> I give all my clients to my dad now. There's this one client, my past client. This is recently. We're closing Monday. Um, hopefully she's not watching. She, uh, like we went, we went through the deal. We, you know, and I've had it. Oh my God. Long story short, I realized I was like, this is why I don't do this anymore. <laughs> right. This is why I don't do this anymore because this is a lot for this little bit amount of money. Yeah. Okay. The seller wins more. The se people, people don't trade equal amount for equal amount. Okay? Like, like if I have a dollar, you have a dollar, you give me a dollar, I'm going to trade a dollar, we still got a dollar. Right? No. We're not going to do that deal. But if I got $50 and you got a dollar, you're going to trade me that all day long. See, people don't trade money for what they feel like is the equal amount of the money. People only trade money for what they feel like is worth more than the money. That's why people have always been willing to pay 5 and 6% and it hadn't went down for 20. I've been in the business 22 years and I still get 5 and 6%. Why is that? People are happy to pay it. Why? Because what we do is worth more to them than the money they pay us. Does that make sense? That's why we make the money we make and it hasn't went down. Because what we do is worth way more than the money that we are paid. We underpaid. Okay. So, what was the question? I go on rants sometimes, but I, but I will say... The rants is where I believe I can help you guys the most because when I start saying stuff off the top of my head, I feel like that's helping you guys become the person who can do the thing. Because it's all about becoming the person. You can't do it until you become. You can't become until you hear this stuff and go apply it.
I got time for one more. You got one here. Or I see her has a hand up. She has a hand up too, so I'll take two more. Whatever. Here we go. Hey. I'm hey. So there's a lot to this. And what you just said about the greatest of you is the one that provides the service. Yep. And the value. Yep. How do you pour back into yourself when you're giving so much out? Pour back into yourself? Oh, you have to have to take time for yourself. I wake up every day and read the Bible for a while. Nice. And then I read and then I read a, a self development book. And then I go to the gym. All that time is for me. I was at the gym. I was at the gym this morning. There's this little window outside that goes that walks outside. I'm like dog walker, dog walker, dog walker, dog. I'm like it is 5:30 in the morning, guys. You have to you have to schedule me time to decompress. Does that does that help? I know that was kind of probably like the same thing everyone would say. So, but. Um, do you take time for yourself? You can. I hate to say it. But okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm working three jobs. Okay. So one job is for a DJ, uh, the other is the realtor, but, and then the other is just being a wife and taking uh, care of my household. Uh, and a lot of people in this industry don't talk about having to take care of the household. Yeah. Because Hey, you leave Jim, you do this and that, mm -hmm. but the toilet needs to be Okay. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I give it up for her? Peace and love. And, and, and I'm just here to tell you that first you have to believe. If you don't believe, nothing's going to happen. Right. Then you got to work hard. If you don't work hard, you're done. Then you have to adapt, which means learning new things as you move as you move along and then you got to be patient this is the parts a lot of people do the first three right but then this one kills them and it makes them overwork themselves i, pro I promise you this working harder at the same thing will not get you more oh nice <laughs> okay Here, I I'll, I'll illustrate Most of us start here, okay? We learn something new and it gets us here. What in the? It gets us here, right? And then what do we do? We feel like, well, we learned this and it got us here. If we just do more of this and we work really, really hard, then it's gonna, eventually it's gotta get us there. No! What you learn will only get you so far and then what, do you, and then what happens? You go this way. And then what happens? You stay here forever unless you learn something new. Then you, it gets you here. And then you get here and then you stay there until you learn something new. And the problem is, is that something got us some success. And so we think it's going to take us to the promised land. But I promise you that it won't. And, and the, here's, the, here's the scariest part of it, before I get to the last one. The scariest part of it is that we learn a little bit and we think that we know it all. And we think there's no more to learn. So, we, so we're like, no, there can't be anything else. There can't be anything else. We just got to keep doing this. I'm sorry, guys. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Reading books, going to things like this, hiring coaches, continuing to learn, getting around other agents, getting around number one agents, going to lunches with number one agents, spending time with others who are succeeding, spending time with people who are on the same level as you, getting a little bit of all of it, but learning new things so that you can do new things so that you can master new things. That's the name of the game. All right, last question. You don't have to stand. Um, that would be nice to see them in person. You as well. Um, so I guess my biggest problem with your point is I have learned from you that when I fall down, 
happy to say hey, this is Lisa Remix First Choice. What in the world can I do for you? And I say that. Why would you say that? Um, because I want to know how I can help them. Okay, but that's, you don't start out with that though. You're not gonna. You're not gonna start there. That's not, that shouldn't be the first thing you say. Well, and that was my question. So yeah. How can I really convince them? Because I'm an over. You're not. Li listen to me. Let me stop. Let me stop you right there. Over because you have to stop using the word convince. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You're never going to convince anyone of anything. So stop trying to do it. What we're trying to do is help them do what they're already doing. So the object is, is to find, figure out what they're doing, right? The object is to figure out what, they're do, what they want to do, why they want to do it, so that we can help them do it, yeah. right? Now, I'll answer your question. I'll tell you how, how to do this. The, 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 highest level of, the highest level of sales calls is reading people on the phone, right? There's, 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 there's five stages. I go through it in my challenge. The highest level is reading people on the phone, okay? And this is where you achieve mastery. This is where you've went through not gonna die, what to say, how to say it, now we're reading people on the phone. You can't read someone on the phone, on the phone or in person or on a Zoom or anywhere if you're not giving them any time to say anything. The, the, the objective is, is to say something and then listen to the response, how they say it, how fast they say it, what was their mood, what did they say, uh, and you're reading them, okay? You take that information, that data, and you respond accordingly with another question looking for them to respond with so you can collect a little more data. And then there's another question to collect a little more data. Now you've got this nice picture that you can now get into the meat of the phone call. But we're not trying to just see what we can do to help them. We want to offer them some kind of value. What do I suggest? I suggest seeing if they want a bigger house. And you've got one in mind you'd love to show them. And they're just seeing how they respond. Even if I have a buyer for their home. Say I have a buyer for their home. I'm not going to call and say I have a buyer. I'm going to say, hey, I, I see you have a three bedroom. I got a nice four bedroom right down the road. It's brand new or whatever. I'd love to show it to you. And just see what they say. Oh, yeah, well, we're, yeah, no, we're not going to do anything. Okay, cool. Well, you didn't even bring up the buyer thing that it sounds like every other scam agent. You didn't, even, you didn't have to use that one. Now you just showed up as, I'm Miss, Mrs. Value Agent. I'm trying to help you live a better life. Now they open up to you and tell you exactly what they do want to do because you're not trying to just sell their home. Take, take, like, like, you know when people get foreclosed, how mad they get, the bank's going to take my home. It's kind of how they feel when agents call and say, hey, will you sell your home? No, I love my home. Quit trying to steal it from me. <laughs> right? Just love people. Just love people. I got, a, I got a question for you guys before, if you guys are going to do something else, Carrie Ann. Um, Raise your hand if you feel like you've learned something today. Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. How many of you guys, keep your hands up, don't want the learning to stop? Okay, how many of you guys feel like you would benefit if, if I could work with you as your coach? Ah, I have a gift for you. Set more listing appointments dot com backslash CMG. I created a one time offer for you guys. Normally, my challenge is a week long challenge, and I will coach you for a week, right? Like, raise your hand if you've been to the challenge and it's been. Normally it's $297 for um, VIPs. VIP, you get to come on Zoom and ask me questions all week as I do the trainings. Um, $100 off if you buy it today. And the next one starts September 9th. Okay, if you go here, there's a coupon code for VIP. You just put in 100 at checkout. And I would love to spend more time with you guys. Um, furthermore, I am taking on uh, private clients one-on-one. -on -one. So if you make over twenty thousand a month, there's a link in that. There's a link on this web page where you can set up a call with me. If you uh, if you make over twenty thousand a month, I'll, I'm taking on one-on-one -on -one private clients. 
trying to think if there's something else, but I don't think there is. And I love you guys so much. And uh, I guess I'm gonna get back to my family now. Here goes Mary Ann. And uh, yeah, yeah, you guys have a good one. Well, that's not fair to these people in the front. Well, I was careful earlier. Oh, you were? Oh, I see you back there. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, that. Dude. That, that was like. No, no, no. Here we go. I got it. One more try. One more try. One more try. One more try. Thank God you can sell real estate. Get a different table. I was a linebacker. One more. All right. Give it to somebody special. Biscuit love. Cheerleader. That's my cheerleading. Here we go. So what we do is you don't have a fun event at CMD. How long can you come into the dance and give away? We've got a lot of fun giveaways. But where's Ricky? Ricky, we want to do a, pic a picture. So we, if you can come down here with everybody, so that would be good. Oh, like down yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you need to be in the light. Yeah. So do, 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 they, do they need to turn the light on so they can see the audience? So we're gonna see everybody, so you can. Nice so come down is what you're saying? Go down there? Yes. And I have Patterson, 